Okay, on this page we're going to talk a little bit more about transformations. So as we look at the equation, we have to remember all of those high low rules and we want to discern what each of these things does. So what does a negative do? What does a 2 do? What does a 7 do? And what does a 6 do? So there are four transformations here. Will you take a second to try to make sense of some of those transformations and then we'll go over them. Okay, remember high low stands for horizontal inside, vertical outside. So anything outside is vertical. That means like up and down. So the first one, the negative, is going to reflect it over the x-axis. The two is going to be a vertical stretch by two. That's making it longer, taller. Um, the seven, because it's inside, it's the opposite of how it seems. Instead of the right seven, this one is actually left seven. And then the plus six is up six. Okay, how do we graph that? Because that's a lot of transformations. You could go step by step and graph each transformation and finally get to your destination. But that would kind of take a while. So instead, we are going to look at our table of values. And again, the always question, question always is, what do we put into our table of values? In our table of values, we want to be able to take the square root, right? So that means that we all put one a perfect square. So 1, 0, 1, 4, 9, and 16 are some perfect squares. Well, how do we get that? To get a zero, you would have to plug in a negative seven, right? Because a negative seven plus seven is going to be zero. Uh, if you plugged in a one, I'm sorry, to get a one, you would plug in a negative six, because negative six plus seven is one. To get a four, you would plug in a negative three. To get a nine, you would plug in two. And to get a 16, you would plug in nine, because nine plus seven is 16. Now we can kind of mentally go through and plug these in. So negative seven, when you plug it in, you get zero. Zero times anything is zero, plus six. That means that this must be a six here. Negative six, negative six plus seven is one, square root of one is one. One times negative two is negative two, plus six is four. Negative two plus six is four. Negative three, negative three plus seven is four, square root of four is two. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 6 is 2. Now, you might start to see a pattern. Sometimes, depending on where you are in the, in the graph, that pattern might hold. So I'm expecting the next one maybe to be a 0, right? It's going down by 2 every time. Maybe, let's see if this one comes out to be 0. We plug in a 2. 2 plus 7 is 9. 9 times, uh, square root of 9 is 3. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, negative 6 plus 6 is 0. Okay, so we're going down by 2 every time. And then 9 is 16, square root of 16 is 4, 4, that makes negative 8. So a negative 2 is our final answer there. Now I'm going to plot these, and we can look at how this plot applies to these. So I'm going to take a second to plot those. Why don't you pause the video here and plot your points. All right, let's take a look at how this graph ma matches up. So remember, I might take a second to draw on here the original parent function. Okay, so here's my parent function, f of x. This should be reflected over the x-axis. That's going to turn it upside down. Look, we're upside down, that's good. It's going to be a vertical stretch by two. That is, means it's getting taller in a way, and that's happened as well. Also, it goes left 7 and up 6, and that's our vertex right there at negative 7, 6. So the transformations all match up. In addition, it does follow the 1, 3, 5 rule um, with a vertical stretch by 2. So it goes over 1, down 2, over 3, down 2, over 5, down 2, over 7, down 2. So it is following our 1, 3, 5 pattern with a stretch of 2. Our domain. Okay, our domain has to start here, right? So domain is x's, range is y's. So from the x's, it is going from negative 7 all the way to infinity. And on the range, it is going from 6 to infinity. Okay, those are some transformations with a square root. Now let's look at a cube root. All right, once again, we need to look at if this is our parent function, how does this relate? So there are I think there's four in the box here, but um, there's only three here. So take a look at what these three things might do and list them here in your text box. All right, let's take a look. So negative, excuse me, a positive one half. One half on the outside means a vertical shrink by one half. Right four, because it's minus, means right. 
and down 6. Minus 6 means down. Okay, so now let's talk about how to put that into a table. Negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, and 8 is what we're trying to get the inside of the radical to be because it's a cube and these are perfect cubes. So to create a negative 8, I would need a negative 4, right? Negative 4 minus 4. To create a negative 1, I would need a 3. To create a 0, of course, I need 4. To create a 1, I would need 5. And to create an 8, a positive 8, I would need 12. All right, my parent function starts at the origin, goes up 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, and then over 8 and up 1. All right, 7 from there, 8 total. So that's my parent function. Now I need to do my transformations. This should be vertical shrink by 1 half, go right 4, down 6. All right, let's see how we do it with a table. Plug in the table, negative 8, Q root of negative 8 is negative 2, half of negative 8, uh, negative 2 is negative 1, minus 6 is negative 7. Plug in a 3, 3 minus 4 is negative 1, negative 1 times 1 half is negative 1 half, minus 6 is negative 6.5. All right, not great to be a decimal, but that's okay. It's just a 0 0.5, so that we'll, we'll deal with it. Plug in a 4, we get 0. That's a negative 6. Plug in a 5, that is 1. Half of 1 is half. Minus 6 is negative 5.5. Plug in a 12, we get 8. Cube root of 8 is 2. Half of 2 is 1. 1 minus 6 is negative 5. Okay, so now we're going to plot these points on our graph. Take a second to do that. All right, your graph should look something like this. Um, mine's actually a little bit too tall there. I feel like it should be more like that. So let's take a look. Vertical, vertical shrink by one half. So instead of being this tall, it should be something like this tall, right? Then right four down six lands me right here. So here I am, but instead of going up one, I'm just going to go up a half and then over seven and up another half, down one, over seven, down a half, or sorry, down half, and then down another half and over seven from there. So here is my new function, the domain and range. Actually, for a cubic, the domain and range is um, always negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, these last four are basically taking the words and putting it into an equation. So if we go down seven and left three, take a second, what do you think on that? Okay, you should be getting x plus 3, that makes it go left 3, and then minus 7 makes it go down 7. Vertical stretch by a factor of 3 and translated up 5 units. Take a second to figure out that one. Okay, 3 on the outside, square root x, and then plus 5 on the outside of that. That plus 5 is going to move it up, that 3 is going to be stretching it. Okay, next one. Again, take a second to try to figure this one out. Okay, reflective across the x-axis is a negative. Up 8 units is a plus 8. Last one, vertically compressed by a factor of 1 half, reflected over the x-axis, translated left and down 1. That's a lot. See what you can come up with. Okay, vertically compressed by a factor of 1 half, reflected over the x-axis means a negative outside. Left three units means plus three on the inside, and down one means minus one on the outside. All right, we'll practice some of this in class next time.